planet Earth, 66 million years ago. These are the pterosaurs, the flying and relentless predators of Earth. Across the globe, these shallow coastal seas cover an area of 25 million square miles. Far more than even the largest continent. That, combined with the richness of the waters, makes them very important habitat. Wherever land meets sea, nutrients rise from the deep, fueling an abundance of life. It's especially rich here in the North Atlantic, where huge shoals of fish come close to the shore. One kind of animal thrives in such places and forms immense colonies. Flying reptiles. Pterosaurs. Here, on the beaches of North Africa, there are seven different species of them. They come here to feed, to rest, and to raise their young. Tethodraco are well adapted to spend time on the ground, and not only make their nests here, but stay to protect their brood. And their young certainly need protection. The dagger beak of Fisfatodraco. A nine-foot-tall predator that stalks through these colonies, looking for a chance to snatch an unguarded hatchling. But some types of pterosaurs are less well adapted to life on land. They have a slightly different nesting strategy. They make their nests where they will attract less attention from predators. Isolated cliffs like this are ideal. Pterosaur eggs are leathery and can easily dry out, so they need to be covered. Beneath this pile of seaweed, something is stirring. A tiny Alshan hatchling, just a few inches high and weighing less than two ounces. Their mothers left the eggs here about two months ago. Calling to each other synchronizes hatching. There is safety in numbers. Their first instinct is to climb. Hatchlings from hundreds of nests gather on the cliff top to prepare for their first flight. But their wings are still unformed. The bones of the long finger that supports their wing membrane must first straighten and lock together and that will take some hours. But they can't stay here for long. Their bones are extremely light, up to 90% air, and that makes the effort needed to take off much easier. Even so, test flights are essential. There will only be one chance to get it right when the time comes to launch. The cliff edge creates updrafts, and they can help. So, it pays to gather their facing into the prevailing winds and towards the mainland. But no one seems quite ready to take the plunge. Until, at last, one youngster sets them all on their way. They're not heading for the beach and its colony. They need to get to the mist forest that lies beyond. Barbaridactylus. Powerful, predatory pterosaurs that normally catch fish. But the hatchlings are too good to miss. One way to take evasive action is to simply fold their wings and drop. But losing height will make it harder for them to reach the forests. A crash landing in the colony. It's no place for a hatchling on its own. A lucky survivor from the first wave of hatchling, still heading in the right direction. Sanctuary. Of the hatchlings that left the stack, few get as far as this. But for them, this forest offers all the shelter and food that a young pterosaur needs. For the next five years, this will be their home. Then, they will be large enough to join the adults, catching fish out on the open ocean. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe to continue receiving videos like this. Have a great day.